So after being told off numerous times about not wearing Carpology clothing in video, I think today I've got an excuse because we are here at WAF to HQ. So we're starting a new series called Behind the Brand. Basically, it is what it sounds like. We're going to be visiting different brands, seeing a little bit behind the scenes. And today we're going to be looking at Waft in general, uh, finding out about the brand, how it's created, some new products and some Black Friday deals as well. So let's go on through and have a little look. How you doing, you all right? How you doing? Good to meet you. You too. So we're talking about obviously the new styles you've got coming out. Yep. We're talking about the brand. Are you still doing that big giveaway at the end? Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Cool. Right. Uh, oh, I'm still recording. So it started 10 years ago. It's, it's been our 10 year anniversary this year. Um, as a university project. So in my last year, final major project, we had to um, either come up with a brand or uh, a campaign or something like that um, that, was, that could be live, uh, could be a real thing. Um, and I had already started the brand by then, but I used my last year at uni to develop it, bring it on, um, put it onto social media and actually started it from there. Um, so that's, that's where it started, um, get asked a lot about the name as well, um, and how you pronounce it. How do you pronounce it? How do you? So it's waft, um, silent E, gets called everything really, gets called a multitude of different, yeah, different so names. I've certainly heard some variety of pronunciations. Yeah, we? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, it's waft, it's an acronym for watch out for their meals. Um, which came from a TV series at the time called The Mighty Boosh. Um, shout out to Noel Fielding. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case he's watching. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it came from there. Um, he play, he, In the comedy sketch, he plays various different characters, um, one of which is called The Hitcher, who's a cockney geezer, top hat, polo for an eye, green face. Um, and he's, he's a hitchhiker. He's got, he's got a huge thumb on him. And uh, <laughs> one of his sayings is, is, you know, he talks about eels and being a cockney, eels, jelly deals. And yeah, it just stuck between me and a group of friends at the time. Um, we kept having references to eels, uh, watch out for the meals. How that got from that to Woff the fishing clothing brand, I don't know. It was uni time, so yeah. It's a little niche, isn't it? Little niche, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's a random name, but it has a, has a backstory as well. I met Louis on a lake, funny <laughs> enough. And, uh, yeah, he was a little, little bailiff walking around asking for tickets, this, that and the other. And um, sort of like friendship grew from there, really. Like over the years, whilst he was working on the brand and bringing out new designs and stuff, I'd sort of like, have, just having an opinion on it, really, wasn't mm -hmm. it, to start yeah. with. And um, yeah, eventually we're sort of like tweaking ideas together and just, just generally getting more involved over the years. And um, yeah, at the time, I mean, I've said before in the, in the Nash podcast, but at the time I, I, I was a chef and I didn't have a lot of spare time, but somehow I did make a bit of time to help you uh, around, mum and dad's around house. your mum and dad's <laughs> house. And then eventually with a little bit of printing and stuff like that, the, the old Colchester unit. And uh, yeah, just after a couple of years, thought it would be about time to get more involved officially, if you like, and here we are. Here we are. Many, many years later. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbing each other's legs. Rubbing each back. other's legs, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so here... Everything. Everything, Absolutely pretty everything. much, yeah. Um, so we have a warehouse here uh, where we pick and pack and dispatch all the orders from. Um, we print here as well. So we have a print studio. We're currently sitting above it at the moment. Um, in our shooting studio, which is decorated for autumn, that's it. As you autumn can see, themes. yeah, yeah. We've literally just finished the shoot, and we last week yeah, with um, with George. So this is the remnants of a, of a, an autumn shoot. We decided to do something a bit different this year. Um, bring a bit of the outside into the studio, yeah, exactly it. which has been pretty cool. Um, so yeah, basically, print, pack, dispatch, um, print, and shoot. Studio, so Sorry. models, product, everything. 
heavily influenced by the outdoors really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we're both outdoorsy people. Uh, fishing is just sort of one leg off of that really. Um, I do a lot of mountain biking, you do a lot of walking in the summer and even in the winter. And uh, there's so much inspiration from all across the world really, yeah. like whether it is hiking or walking or just camping and and, and we, we, we feel like we bring a lot of those elements into our clothing, you know, just just try and Oh, the phone's ringing now. <laughs> See, everything's going off here at Waft <laughs> HQ. It's always a busy environment. Hello, Waft Clearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, dead right. Like, comes from the outdoor, in, like industries, um, outdoor like experiences. Yeah, like streetwear thrown in Street, there as well. Yeah, it's a lot of brands street. that we follow, and yeah, definitely take inspiration from. Although we obviously we're in touch with the fishing industry, we we know what's sort of going on and stuff. We do follow it um, day to day. Um, our sort of influences come from outside. We like to bring new concepts yeah. or ideas into it, don't 100%, we? Hundred percent, definitely. Either haven't been done before or have been looked at. And from a, from a design on a piece of paper all the way through from the garment, it's done within this unit. Yeah. It? So we have, um, yeah, we work with a, a freelance illustrator for anything um, that's very complex, um, as in print-wise. Yeah. So, uh, like the collaborations that we do um, each year. The artwork for that would be created from um, Dan, our freelancer. Yeah, but it's nice because we try and keep everything as close to home as yeah. we possibly can. And I'm sure Lou was, was about to say, but I jumped in there first. <laughs> <laughs> that Dan's a designer that we have worked with, you know, yeah. for, for a number of years Pretty now. And yeah, you went to, went to uni with him, didn't you? Yeah. You went at uni. Yeah, in the same classroom. So he's seen the brand from you know getting right off the ground to how it's progressed now. So he's been part of the. The journey all the way through which is really nice um so yeah he gets it and he does he gets us and how we like to work and puts up with us <laughs> yeah yeah definitely puts up with us bless him but um yeah it's nice start off with a basic design and yeah. after lots of to and throwing and obviously he comes in to, to the unit as well to throw ideas about with us mm -hmm. yeah. doesn't take long to get to a, yeah, he's a very, final concept very yeah. creative guy and yeah. the thing some sometimes the ideas would be led by himself um or well, majority of the time, it's it's an idea that we come up with. But he's got this particular flair and this particular style that we've kind of adopted in as our own over yeah. the years, haven't we? Yeah, definitely. Like he takes quite heavy influence from the likes of like like American hip hop mm. music yeah. and, and sort of uh, yeah, just general sort of out of the box streetwear, which is quite refreshing to go into the industry. I think. Well. What one? We, we started with Between the Seams, that yeah. was the first one, wasn't it? Which pretty much started f with... Filming ourselves. Filming, filming ourselves, our fishing. Yeah, doing a bit of fishing. Yeah. And eventually we sort of like committed, we thought, right, we'll go out for a day with one camera and one lens that we've got and a yeah. very cheap budget mic and <laughs> came back with a film first trip. Yeah. And uh, that, well, that was actually part of, well, that, that particular session was part of the film, which was the first uh, Between, Between the, the seams, seams, which is made out of segments of different fishing trips that we'd had and that one at this stage was yeah. at that stage sorry was in the UK yeah and uh, as much as we love UK fishing there's a lot more out there isn't there yeah <laughs> there's a lot more out there just a bit yeah so that, that was when Crater and Path was born um, we didn't really have sort of a concept for it we went we went away fishing we, we'd booked two weeks out haven't we mm. like in was it the, it's the end of April? I think the first time we went, when it end of April. I'd literally just got back from a week snowboarding, right. and I was aching from yeah. head to toe. And it was like, right. I mean, don't get me wrong, the trip was planned. Yeah. But I think I was in the UK for a matter of hours, with yeah. next to no sleep, and we loaded the van and head to Holland. Yeah, straight to Holland. Straight yeah. to Holland. Yeah. And that was going to be just kind of a, a trip, like a recce, really. Like we, although we'd planned it, it was like the first time we'd done anything like that, wasn't it? Yeah. And yeah, we got an amazing film out of it. Couldn't have dreamt for a better film, to no, be honest. Like with the story that's inside that film, especially about the capture in Germany, 100%. Like, having spoken about it with our friend Niels like the night before in his house about this particular fish and the backstory, to have that on the bank within that was pre twenty four pre odd hours after that was like. But the crazy wow. thing was that wasn't even bearing in mind this lake's over a hundred acres. That wasn't the only capture that we had that we'd spoken about previously no, either. No. Like the first one that I no, had, that yeah, half that linear, yeah, yeah, we yeah. were talking, we saw pictures of and stuff like that, and even the pretty impressive koi yeah. that Nils had. Yeah. So all three of us had had a fish that we had spoken about literally on the build up to this trip, yeah. and it was just mental. And that was just Germany. 
Yeah. I mean, we could talk, we could literally do a whole segment just talking about that film because yeah. it was just probably, well, it was the most incredible to date trip, fishing trip we've had. Yeah. Even irrelevant of the fishing, it was probably the best trip I've ever had. Yeah, yeah, It was definitely. crazy. It was crazy. And there'll be plenty more of those to come. We haven't Absolutely. been able to because of, yeah. everybody knows that word. That word. That word. But, yeah, we haven't been able to because of that. So, um, but yeah, plans are starting to come together now for spring 21, aren't they, mate? Exactly. It's also worth delving into the name as well. Yeah. Create Your Own Path. It wasn't just obviously made for the film. It's, it's a slogan that we've used for the brand since the day, since yeah. day dot. And it just, Create Your Own Path, Creating Your Own Adventure was just like the perfect name for such trip. Yeah. And obviously it's stuck, for, stuck, stuck to this point. So I suppose it's probably worth sort of going into, you know, mm. the fact that the development of the brand has been very natural and it's been Absolutely, going yeah. on for a long time. But I think one of the things that's definitely up there, I mean, certainly on my agenda day to day has been for the last few weeks and if not months, is um, just looking at our supply chain. Like, you know, it's getting very, a lot of our items are, we've, we've designed them and had them made it from China. Um, but we've, you know, even with Brexit, the pandemic, uh, raising shipping costs, things like that, um, has really made us sort of look and sort of think about our supply chain. So like I was saying with the jumpers earlier, um, you know, these are made in Portugal and that's a bit more close to home, um, just being in Europe a couple of hours away. So I think for the brand going forward, we're looking to sort of bring production a little bit close to home of our garments. Um, if that ends up in the UK, which we are having discussions about Absolutely, at the yeah. minute, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, that's the dream goal really, is to you know, bring the production close to home um, and yeah, just keep developing items specifically for carp anglers, like we mm. always say. 100%, yeah. Um, that, yeah, either sort of make your fishing a bit more comfortable or maybe even improve your, in your, your fishing in some way. Yeah. But back to what you were saying about obviously moving stuff to the UK as well. It's not mm. something that's just stemmed from no, the pandemic. This is something that we we have always wanted to, you know, we've always wanted to bring the manufacturing side but close to home. Hence why we've got the print in here, all yeah. the embroidery we've done in the UK mm -hmm. um, to a close little ha that place just up the road that we've got to know really well over the years. And uh, yeah, like I said earlier, we're keeping stuff close to home. We've, we've done the, the designer. It's yeah. just like... If we can bring everything back to the UK eventually, yeah, then that is that's a big goal for us to be to be to be honest. Yeah, and um, Europe Europe's the first big step. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah. Let's have a look. Shall I lead the way? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my print studio. So the actual printing process is relatively easy really. All the hard work and all the bits that you really need to know how are uh, all before all this. So all the screens are already covered. Well, I've, I've done this before. I've already covered in a, um, a, a light sensitive acrylic coating left to dry for a few hours with the aid of a little little heater to sort of bring that process on a little bit quicker. And all I'm going to do is I've got my design here printed onto some acetate. Obviously the acetate's see-through and the design's in black. So what that will do is when this is put into the exposing unit, which I'll show you in a minute, it's going to expose all of the screen all of the screen apart from the areas that are covered with the black ink. It will make sense in a minute, I'll show you. So you can see that's just stuck on there with some sellotape. There's essentially gonna be our finished print. I don't know if you can see that, but just in here, there's a little transparent hose, and what's that, what that's gonna do is it's gonna suck out all the air which is going to push this rubber at the top up against the glass so there's so the uh, the acetate with the print on isn't going to move all the times are already set up 
simple as pressing go. So what it's doing now, as I said a minute ago, the vacuum's sucking out all the excess air, and you'll see that compress on itself, which will let it lie nice and flat up against the glass. The first counting down is um, literally just the, just the vacuum, and then you'll see a secondary countdown as the light comes on, and that'll be the exposure time. any different yet but it will do when I start washing it out so just give a little spray to start with just to let the water start breaking down the emulsion You know, I can see where it's starting to break down as I jet wash it through. I mean, it's not a full jet wash, it's just a little bit stronger than a hose. It starts to blow it out. That's your scream. So you've just seen Tris doing a bit of printing. So I'm going to move on to um, one of my favourite items that I've been developing and spending a bit of time on this year um, for a few reasons. One of them is obviously, as we mentioned earlier, sort of overall plan is to bring our manufacturing, our production a bit closer to home. So yeah, these knitted jumpers we've had made in Portugal, um, which has got a very, very good reputation for high quality fabrics, cottons, walls, etc. So yeah, these, these knitted jumpers, um, which fingers crossed, we found out today that they'll be delivered tomorrow. Um, so we're the week leading up to Black Friday. Um, therefore, they will go live on Black Friday. Fingers crossed. It's looking good. So, like I was saying, uh, one of my favourite items I've spent a bit of time developing this year. Um, they are 50% wool and 50% acrylic. So, unlike some other jumpers out there, um, Having that 50% wool is going to really add a lot of warmth to them um, and they're nice and soft as well, wash really well, um, anti-shrink um, and yeah, all round a general sort of very warm garment for the winter. Um, we've done a crew neck and a high roll neck as well. Um, so yeah, just a bit of a winter edge, um, a bit more warmth around, sort of acts as a bit of a scarf around your neck. Um, so yeah, really nice and toasty warm for the winter. So while Luke's here with the cameras, I think it's worth actually showing another item as well um, that we had hoped would be here a bit sooner. But unfortunately, it's not going to be with us. Uh, they're not going to be with us, should I say, until February next year. Um, but we have done a full Sherpa um, gilet and jacket. Um, like I said, they were supposed to be here this side of Christmas, but unfortunately, due to delays that have been completely out of our control that we've been battling against all year, um, unfortunately, yeah, they're not going to be with us, with us until February. Um, but it's really worth mentioning um, the fabric that we've made these from because it's something a little bit different. Um, Luke, you were certainly quite impressed with what you saw earlier, weren't you, with the, um, with the way we've done this. Yeah, yeah. When we were developing these items, we were looking for um, having, a, having a high windproof element to them because Sherpa, when it's raw, it's got a lot of holes in it. Um, so it definitely requires a lining to keep that wind out. But like I said, we couldn't find anything that was suitable um, out there while we were sourcing. So we've actually made the fabric ourselves. Um, so we've combined polar fleece, which is a very, very sort of highly thermal, warm material, and we've bonded it to the Sherpa. So you've actually essentially got a fleece liner um, stuck to the Sherpa, which gives it loads and loads of windproof properties, obviously keeps you very warm. Um, and yeah, very, very, uh, very, very warm, nice new Sherpa items to look forward to in olive and in camo for February next year. So now we've seen a couple of these winter items, I'm going to take you downstairs and show you um, one more thing that we're launching this Friday for Black Friday, uh, which is our Lucky Dip feature. Um, so we'll give you a little look into how that works and what items might be available in that this Friday. OK, 
Okay, so as I was saying, it's worth um, mentioning this feature that we're doing this Friday um, for Black Friday, which is our Lucky Dip. And we've been running the Lucky Dip for about 10 years now. And this, this year's one is full of all sorts of surprises. Um, we've started to fill the shelves. Uh, there'll be a hell of a lot more here ready for Friday. Um, and we're running it from midnight Thursday. So when the clocks turn to Friday morning, so Thursday midnight, zero, 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 as soon as it's uh, Friday, um, the Lucky Dip feature will go live. And as we always do, we have a, a £10 and a £30 option. So in the £10 option, you can expect to get some kind of T-shirt or an item of headwear, possibly a jumper. And that could be literally anything. Um, it could be a blast from the past, so something that we did years ago that we might have a few left over of. Um, or it could be a one-off sample that we've produced um, with our manufacturers and haven't ever gone to production. So you could be getting a real one-of-one one one special item um, for a really, really, really low price. Um, so, I mean, for example, we've got here some examples. I'll pull out a big one here because it looks like a jacket. Um, so for 30 quid, this person is going to win a large Sherpa jacket. Um, £10 one, I'll pluck out a small. Um, in here, this person will win. Uh, a few of these got kept back. Um, that is a, a Nash, uh, a Waft, Waft Times Nash collaboration t-shirt. Signature there from uh, ourselves and Alan. Um, so yeah, that's just an example. Um, we've already been speaking off camera of how, m how many uh, like cool quirky items there are in there. Um, so yeah, but it will be limited to, uh, well, it will finish Monday midnight. So it will run from midnight Thursday, which is technically Friday morning, um, all the way until Monday midnight. So when Cyber Monday ends, the Lucky Dip feature will disappear. Um, and yeah, for the lucky ones who get to purchase one, then uh, yeah, be lucky. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed the first in the Behind the Brand series. Now we did mention a little bit earlier about WAFT doing a bit of a giveaway. And all you've got to do to be in with a chance of winning is make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and to WAFT on YouTube as well. And a month from now, two winners, sorry, two winners will be picked at random from the subscriber list that obviously cross over between both channels and they can be in with a chance of winning a 50 pound gift card. So like I say, there are two to give away. So make sure you subscribe to both Copology and Waft on YouTube. But for more of this sort of content, make sure you subscribe to us. Obviously you're going to, because you want to win these anyway. And like us on all our various social media platforms as well, such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, just about everywhere. But yeah, once again, I hope you've enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video.